Hey friends, so I thought in this video I would share a little bit about some Golang resources, some books, some websites that you can use to learn and master the language. The first place I would visit is the main Golang website. And here, if you go to learn, I would go through the tour of Go, which is a place where you can read some explanation and then check the code and test it out and see how it works. If you're like really new to programming or maybe to Go itself, this is an excellent place to start. And there's a lot of different sections. Yeah, it's one of the best things that you can use to become familiar a little bit with Go. Next, you can check their examples. This is pretty cool if you like just want to see one feature and see how it works quickly. For example, let's say you want to check how to use the time package. This is an excellent place to come and see different examples and just a quick reference if you want to think of it that way. Then from there, if you want to see the documentation, this is definitely a place you want to spend a lot of time in. One of my favorite places to go to is Effective Go. It's like a book. They have a million sections that covers almost every topic in Go. For example, if you go to Concurrency, they describe what it is and then they give you examples on how to use it. It's a very good and clear documentation for these things. Now, from there, I highly recommend you go to the Go blog. They actually share a lot of useful things here. It's not just like updates and here's what's new or whatever. So if you go back even with like older blog posts, there are things about, let's say, logging, structured logging and how to use it. And there's so many things here. So I would definitely keep an eye on their blog and read whatever they share. And then after that, there's this website, which is essentially called Go Proverbs. This is a very cool thing. It's a, essentially a list of ideas that the Go developers wants to follow or keep in mind when they code. And these are links to YouTube videos, I believe, most of them. Yeah. So don't communicate by sharing memory. Instead, sharing memory by communicating. If you click on it, that's a video. Some of the people who created the language itself are essentially talking in these videos. Definitely a place to spend some time on and learn these ideas. From there, there's a website called Learn Go with Tests. From there, there's this website called Learn Go with Tests. And this is a very awesome thing. So essentially, this website will teach you how to learn the language through writing tests. So if you go to Arrays and Slices, here you see they have an example here, which is a test for a function called sum. And you basically start writing the functions and, and their tests, and you learn two things in one shot, which is pretty cool. And tests in Go are not that hard to write, so it's a good habit to learn how to use them and how to write them. And this is an excellent website to do so. And there's a lot of features here, like reflections, and you see there are tests and how to test something that is using reflection, synchronization for concurrency. This is probably one of the best resources, in my opinion, a free one to learn the language and practice it. I would spend a lot of time on this, just go over everything here. From there, there's a bunch of books I want to share, and some of them I actually read. Most of them I read, actually. So to start, there's this book called Let's Go. Somebody on Twitter shared this with me, and I think it's pretty cool. If you look at the table of content, you see there's a lot of like references to things related to web development and web services, things like routing, templating, etc. So this feels like a book that would be excellent for someone who wants to build websites and backend for websites. The next book is called Everyday Golang. This is a book that I bought and read. It's a very good one. And as you can see here, it covers so many different topics. This will give you also an overview on so many different things like dealing with metrics is a pretty cool topic and using Docker with your different services. Another book that you would probably want to consider. This is not a long book as well, so you can read it in you know a couple of days and just practice it. From there, there are two books here that are written by Thorsten. These two books are interesting. So Thorsten uses Golang here, and essentially he teaches you everything about interpreters and compilers, and you end up like writing a compiler using Golang. A very interesting way to learn the language and just practice it and try building some complicated things with it. These books are excellent if you know a little bit of coding and not just starting from scratch. They teach you a lot about code in general and just compilers and how to build one your own. From there, there are four more books that I've recently read and I think are exceptionally good. This is one of my favorite books. It's called 100 Go Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. It's a very practical book. That's the best thing about it. You can tell the person who wrote this book 
have a lot of experience writing Go. And so one of the coolest things I like about this book is how they cover concurrency. And he shows you some of the pitfalls and how to solve them and how to be like aware of what's going on. Next, there's this book, which is something I'm actually currently reading. It's a very good book as well. It touches a lot about concurrency and the different parts of this idea and what is concurrency, what is parallelism and things like sync and deadlocks and starvation. And it's a good book if you know some Go, but then you want to like learn how to use some of the advanced features, mainly concurrency, and how to actually write them correctly and be aware of the mistakes that you might see there. It will also teach you like how to optimize your code to perform better the name it's actually it says achieving high performance that's exactly what this person is trying to do in this book essentially it will teach you how to use the features in go that will allow you to write applications that perform really well with like concurrency and things like that next book is this one event-driven architecture this is also something i've been wanting to go into it's a very good book and i haven't read it yet but from what i've heard it covers event-driven architecture, which is essentially if you're building a microservice or multi-service system, you want to have like events going. You want to communicate through events because you can have asynchronous communication. There's a lot of things here that I know about and a lot of things that I have no idea what they mean. However, I think it's an excellent book to dive even deeper in not just learning Go itself, but more about SecureS or domain driven development and things in that nature. This is something I'm really excited to learn about, mainly because of the work I do right now it involves a lot of event driven architecture. So this will really help me. I highly recommend this book if you are wanting to see how to use this language in a more advanced or in a more real world scenario. Next, this book is a little bit old. However, it's one of the best books to learn about concurrency in Go. So you've noticed the theme here that there's a lot of books that talks about concurrency and probably read two or three books already about this. The reason for that is Go as a language is not actually difficult to learn and I can figure out the syntax and how things are written, but you have to learn the ideas. You have to learn what is concurrency, how to use it, what is a different kind of key component of concurrency. And so spending enough time on this topic and, and really understanding how it works will help you not just as a Go developer, but as a developer in general. So this is another book that I would consider if you have the time to even read more about this. Even though it's like a little bit old here, the content is still very good and definitely worth reading. So if you find some code that doesn't work anymore, it's very easy to just translate it into a newer version of Go. Next, there's this book, which somebody on Twitter recommended, and it's called Learning Go. I haven't read that yet, and it seems like it also covers some intermediate topics. There's a new version of it, so I would maybe wait for this one here, second version. It's going to be released in February. Yeah, this is, I'm not sure about this book yet, but I think it's pretty interesting. Definitely worth checking out when it's out. Another thing I would spend some time on is improving your tooling. So the next thing I would spend some time setting up and making sure it's set up correctly is a good language server. So Go has something called Go PLS. It's a very good language server. It's very fast and it covers a lot of features. I would definitely consider this language server and use it with your favorite editor. I use NeoVim, so it has good support there. If you use VS Code or whatever, you can also use it there. Make sure you have something set up whenever you're coding Go, just because it adds a lot of nice features, some auto-completion and some documentation. This seems trivial, but a lot of people actually don't know about these things, so I'm just taking the time to share it. If you don't want to go that route and you have the, you want to invest in an editor, Goland is a very good option. I actually used this for a long time, and I think it's one of the best Go IDEs out there. It's full features. Their language server is excellent. It's actually very fast these days. And if you use Vim or NeoVim, they have very good support for Vim motions. They use something called Idea Vim. It's a plugin. Yeah, I would consider this one as well. See all that clutter here? You can actually remove all of that and just make it super clean. The key here to learn anything in just Go is to write the code yourself. You actually need to practice. If you're starting out with this language, look for things like how can I write a... HTTP server, for example, how can I read a file? How can I decode a string? Or how can I connect to a database? These topics, these ideas, you actually need to learn about them and practice them. So coding is probably the best teacher you have and you need to struggle with it. You need to get stuck and you need to do the research so that the more you do that, you end up learning and memorizing these concepts. And what I found is, well, you can read a million books if you don't write the code and you don't try it yourself, you probably won't learn anything. You're just going to forget about them. So make sure you spend the time to practice and don't rush the process. 
So it's important to just let these ideas become second nature to you. And the interesting thing about Go is you don't want to think as frameworks. So a lot of people who have been coding for a while, they end up using a bunch of frameworks, which I love, like Laravel is an excellent framework, React maybe or whatever. These are tools that you can use to build software very fast. Go in a way encourages you to use the standard library. So take the time to actually learn that. If you see the website that I showed you earlier here, if you go to docs, they actually have a link for their standard library. And there's a reason for that. They want you to learn this. They want you to go here and check the different packages and read about them and learn how to use them. They do encourage you to try to build everything with the existing libraries before you try to find a new framework or tool to build something. So a lot of people would use, for example, Fiber, which is inspired by Express to build some web service. This is okay. There's no wrong, nothing wrong with that. However, it doesn't feel like the Go way of doing something. You can actually write a very solid Golang service with just the existing provided libraries. And you don't always need to do that. This is nice, obviously cleaner maybe, but you don't need that. You'll be surprised how many things can be built without actually needing to add a lot of things to the language itself. It's very different than using a framework. We're used to just use a framework and then we just start adding packages or whatever. And then from there, we have more features. This is a bit different. And in a way, it has its own advantage. One of the best things is that it forces you to learn some of these concepts. If you're building some authentication layer for some reason, which I hope you don't, it actually teaches you how to do the step-by-step -step thing. You have to read and learn how we can write that correctly and the different challenges that you might face when doing so. Unlike frameworks, which comes usually shipped with the full authentication feature that you can just use, which is good if you wanna like move fast, but if you have more granular control, this is the way to go. Anyways, that's everything I believe I wanted to share in this video. If you know of any more resources or books that you've read and you found to be super good and helpful, please share them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.